This is how to get started in robotics. And without a doubt, this has been my most requested video on the channel since I started it this year, 2025, January-ish timeframe. It's taken me a little while to collect my thoughts on this because robotics is actually quite interdisciplinary, meaning that people come to this field from a lot of different backgrounds. So there really isn't like one way or one path to get into robotics. There are a number of different ways that you can get into the field. And that's a good thing, I think, because it means you have a lot more variety to choose from and you can chart your own course and still get to participate in the field of robotics, still get to work with robotics. So I got into robotics because I took a class in it, plain and simple. I thought it was cool and decided to try the class. And I was like, wow, I see the real world applications of this type of work. And I think I wanna do that. But it's not really the full picture to say that I took a class and then I just went into a PhD program. By the time I took a robotics class, I had taken so many other types of classes. I had taken mechanical engineering classes, like thermodynamics and fluid mechanics. I had taken PCB design and antenna theory. I had taken classes in the aerospace department and the material science department. And I had completed an entire undergraduate degree in computer science. On top of that, I had worked for a while in an aerospace lab on a LIDAR project. So I understood sensors a little bit already. And then I had done hands-on work on cars, like full-size cars. So I understood how a ground robot system would work. Like I knew what a suspension system was and things like that. So that meant that by the time I was actually taking a class in robotics, I had all of this background experience under my belt that enabled me to just kind of dive right into cool robotics projects right away, instead of having so much time to build up. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because sometimes people think that they're gonna decide to do something in robotics and that the next day they'll be doing it. I just wanna remind you that it's the cumulative learning experience that is gonna get you from point A to point B. It's not gonna happen overnight. And so you need to be just cognizant of that and gracious with yourself and remember that learning this stuff takes time and it can be a little bit of an in-depth process. The learning over time is what's gonna make you feel comfortable and excited about it instead of overwhelmed. And so you'll get there when you get there. It's just remembering to be gracious with yourself along the way. Okay, so let's talk about one of the first things you need to do, which is build your industry awareness. When people ask me how to get started in robotics, I usually have to flip the question around on them and say, well, what do you know about robotics right now? And I don't do that because I'm trying to be sassy or something. It's because people are coming from different backgrounds and it's really helpful when I know, you know what someone's background is to be able to like, give them any kind of advice. So th these are things like, do you have a favorite robot? Do you know what types of robots exist? Do you have a target company that you wanna work for? And most importantly, why do you wanna do this? You know. Why do you wanna work in robotics? Those are really important questions to answer for yourself over time. And when you get started in robotics, you need a little bit of an idea of what direction you wanna go in. This is true for any field, not just robotics. So you need to spend some time, allocate some time to building your understanding of what's happening in the industry right now, today, in terms of the trends and the hardware that's out there and what the top companies or academic labs are working on. What are the latest developments? What are the trends? Because from there, then you can start to build a roadmap. So let's get talking about staying up to date and how you start building this industry awareness. YouTube is a great resource. There are a lot of hype videos from companies about their most recent product launches that are available on YouTube. So they'll showcase a demo of their robot doing something cool. And even though that's company promotional material, it still gives you an idea of, you know, what's happening in the industry. And a lot of them, they've put a lot of time into the marketing. So they're actually like pretty hypey and cool. Um, and that's a fun place to just look around and see what's going on. Like what does Boston Dynamics have on their channel right now? go check it out. There's also the robotics subreddit. So I think the subreddit is more geared towards people's hobby projects than it is like large scale industry projects, but there is a mix of both on there. 
And so spending some time just like browsing what people are doing on the robotics sub can give you an idea of what's, uh, what kind of things people are working on and help you with a little bit of the language, like the jargon and the lingo that goes along with robotics. So just let that kind of soak in and familiarize yourself with all that. And then there's podcasts. I love podcasts. Um, and so I want to give you two podcasts that came out very recently, two episodes of podcasts related to robotics. And that's your homework for getting started in robotics is to go and listen to those two podcasts. So the first one is from the Robot Report podcast, and it's the ICRA recap episode. So the first one being the ICRA recap episode, ICRA is the International Conference on Robotics and Automation. It's a very big conference. It had 7,000 people there this year. It's hosted in places all over the world on an annual basis. There's a really big part of the conference that is called the Exhibition Hall. And this is where companies will set up a booth and they'll bring their hardware and they'll show off the coolest demos that they can possibly muster <laughs> for the conference. And they're not just doing that to try to get customers, right? They're doing it to try to attract people working in robotics. They're trying to find future employees. So the Expo Hall is a great place to start understanding like what are the trends in the industry? There were a lot of humanoid robots there <laughs> that should tell you something, but go listen to that episode of this podcast and help yourself start building that familiarity with the industry. I think the, the podcast hosts for that episode do a great job discussing everything they saw on the expo floor and why that matters. And they do it in a way that you don't need a PhD or something to understand it. It's very approachable. Okay, second podcast you should go listen to is from the Google DeepMind podcast. And it's the episode Redefining Robotics with Carolina Parada. That episode is all about robotics with the Senior Director of Robotics at Google DeepMind. I fangirled so hard when I found out she is in Boulder. Uh, I found that on LinkedIn. And anyways, very exciting for me. So uh, Google DeepMind is one of the most well-funded, well-resourced research robotics groups out there right now. So if you're trying to understand a little bit about what's happening in research, that's one of the best places to go is to the top companies that are the most well-funded. They're known for putting out high quality research too. They're not just like, you know, doing nothing with all the money they have. They do really high quality research and a lot of people are looking at them to understand trends and uh, to read the papers that come out of their lab. So that podcast is fantastic. And I definitely recommend you go listen to that. These are just two episodes to get you started, but you can see how listening and reading these types of materials are gonna help you build a better intuition for what's happening in the industry, where trends are going, and what the hardware looks like right now that people are using to try to get all these different robots doing things that are useful. All right, now that you've built a little bit of an awareness about what's happening in robotics, now it's time to start crafting your roadmap and learning agenda. So I always like to think of my learning agenda as just a list of the topics I need to cover to learn something. And then I create a learning plan, which is how I'm going to address each one of those things I just listed on my learning agenda, how I'm actually gonna learn that material. So your learning agenda and your learning plan kind of work together to drive you in the direction that you want to go in. Now, there are a lot of really good robotics roadmap videos on YouTube, and I'm not just gonna rip their content and recreate them, I'll just link them for you in the description because they've already done it and they've done a really good job. You wanna start looking at those and thinking about how your own background aligns or doesn't and figuring out where you need to do some background work to get you to the next place you wanna be. So what you'll see is people coming from a lot of different backgrounds in robotics, but generally that background is gonna start with a STEM degree. Things like mechanical engineering, applied mathematics, electrical engineering, computer science, those are really common background degrees. And part of that is because of the math required. So you almost always have mathematics requirements that you'll need to meet very well thought out in these roadmap videos that I'll link for you. So just reference those for some of the key math topics that you would need to learn. Now I do wanna be forthcoming with you here. There aren't very many robotics jobs available for people who don't have a college degree of any kind. That is just, 
the way that things are right now. And I'm not gonna comment on whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I just want you to understand that that's probably gonna be the expectation. So if you haven't done your bachelor's degree yet, your first step should be getting your bachelor's degree in a relevant field. Again, electrical engineering, computer science, mechanical engineering, these types of STEM focused degrees where you're gonna do a pretty uh, rigorous amount of mathematics as part of your underlying curriculum. Now, it's not just about doing a degree either. In the US, it's very common to have college clubs on your campus and you really wanna get involved with an engineering focused college club. So things that are uh, clubs that are building race cars, clubs that are building robots, or uh, just a software project. If you wanna be more on the software side and you're more interested in computer science, if you are more interested on the hardware side, like you actually like uh, CAD and prototyping, then look for places where you can actually build and design hardware as part of your college experience. Those types of things are so important. And when you go to apply for internships and full-time roles after graduation, these college club experiences can be really valuable to you. They can really like put you ahead of someone else who didn't do those things. So make that a part of your expectation for college if you haven't done your bachelor's degree yet. You wanna be getting the STEM focused degree, participating in college clubs that do things that you're interested in, building hardware, building software systems, that kind of thing. And then whenever possible, applying for internships and trying to make that a part of your college experience as well. All right, now let's say you have a bachelor's degree already, but it's in an unrelated field. Maybe you did finance or you did business administration or something like that. There is a certain level of math you are going to need to understand many things in robotics and there's no way around that. Look at some of these curriculum roadmaps and match that up to the curriculum that you covered as part of your undergraduate degree and figure out where your gaps are. And then from there, you're gonna have to make a decision about whether or not you can trust yourself to self-study or you need to be enrolled in a college program and taking some college courses to make up for that deficit. And this is where community college can be a huge benefit to you. So if you're missing linear algebra, calculus, differential equations, many of those classes are available in a community college in the US. So if you're US based, community colleges are a really cost effective way to take a college course. And that might be the right move for you if you are in an unrelated uh, bachelor's or unrelated field. The other option is transitioning right to a master's degree program or a post-baccalaureate program. I know CU Boulder, I think, has a post-baccalaureate computer science program, but that's essentially another um, degree style thing. And it's not without a financial cost. Just be aware of that. And I don't want to discourage you. You should absolutely pursue it if you're interested. I just don't want to give you false impressions that you will be able to understand everything without some of that background info. And so I'm trying to avoid making it seem like you'll be able to do things without having some background in place. You, you do need the background to understand a lot of what is gonna happen at a higher level in robotics. All right, so just reminding you, you've created, you've used one of these roadmap videos to create your learning agenda, which is all of the things that you need to learn that are missing from your current uh, knowledge base. And then you've defined your learning plan. The plan is gonna tell you what you're addressing on the learning agenda. Move on to the next section, which is getting hands-on with robots. And I say hands-on-ish because a lot of people immediately jump to what hardware kit they need to buy. And if you go online and you look for hardware kits, there are tons of them. There are cars, drones, uh, little tiny, gadget things. There are all these different kits that you can get. You can get people's CAD designs and 3D print your own parts. You can do so much stuff, but that can be really overwhelming when you're first starting and not everyone is gonna have extra money to buy hardware in addition to having bought, you know, maybe a laptop or a desktop computer to use while you're learning stuff. Even though hardware is really important in robotics, you are just getting started. So you don't necessarily need to dive into buying a hardware kit right away. I think you can get started in robotics with just a simulator, at least to get you going at first. Simulators are great because all you have to do is download them, start following along with tutorials, there's no hardware setup time, and it really lowers the barrier to entry. I myself actually got started in robotics 
you know, just playing with a simulator to see what it could do and what its capabilities were. So what simulator do you start with? Because there are a lot of them. There's Gazebo, Isaac Sam, which is what I personally use for research. There's Majoko, WeBots, the list goes on and on and on. But some simulators are very hardware intensive. For example, Isaac Sim that I use requires a minimum GPU spec, and it's a fairly high-end graphics card as their minimum. If you are just working on your laptop and you don't have a GPU to access, I would actually get started with WeBots. Uh, I ran WeBots on a relatively old Windows laptop, and it did give me a warning <laughs> about my lack of resources, but I was able to do the tutorials. So I was able to get started without having to buy any additional hardware, without having to make a new laptop purchase or anything like that. I was able to get started with that. And the WeBots tutorials are actually pretty good. I will link this document for you. Like this is the WeBots user guide and it's outlined by sections. It's got all these tutorials. It's got like an estimated time, which I would always like double um, because you might want to look things up. And I think it's nice to just let yourself do that when you're playing around with something like this. Let yourself look things up when you want to. This user guide is outlined very nicely. And I like that about WeBots. I think it's going to work on more hardware than a lot of the more fancy simulators like Isaac Sim and the tutorial is really good to get you started. Okay, now <laughs> for the last step. So you've done your WeBots tutorials, you've like made some stuff happen in a simulator and now you're like ready to start your own project. This is where things really start to take off for you in terms of the learning. There's a reason that a PhD program is basically going from project to project to project to project it's because project-based learning can be so impactful and you really get so much out of that. So once you have gotten a sense of what's happening in the industry and you've listened to a lot of podcasts and you've done a WeBot simulation, now you've got maybe an idea in mind for a project and you can decide at this point whether or not you need a hardware kit for that or you can build it in the simulator and just try it out there first before you actually commit to buying real hardware. Don't be afraid to just dive into something, but also remind yourself to start small and build the complexity from there. For example, if you are working on you know manipulation tasks or you want to do like you know, robot arms that move things, then a starting point can be pick up a block and move it from point A to point B. That is the entirety of your project right there. And once you've mastered that, then you build complexity on it. Like can it now distinguish between a block and a sphere? Keep it simple when you're getting started. If you're doing like a car or something like that, move the car from point A to point B and stop. That's your whole project right there. You can build complexity onto that afterwards. You don't have to start with a really ambitious project right away. And sometimes when you do start with that ambitious project right away, you get discouraged at how slowly things are moving. And so I think it's actually better to just say, I'm just gonna make this car move from point A to point B and stop. And then I'll reevaluate at that point and see what I wanna add in terms of you know complexity from that point. Remember to write things down as you go and always put a date on your notes. It's very rewarding at the end of a project to look back at where you started and see how much you've done and how much you've learned. And you can really only do that if you understand the time frame that it took you to do things and you can look back and reflect on it. And that's why, you know, handwritten notes or even just like a Google Doc or something is so valuable for your learning. Now that's how I would get started. Industry knowledge, build a roadmap, learn a simulator tool, and then start my own personal project whether that's in a simulator or on hardware. I'd love to hear about your ongoing projects. And if you're looking for people to help you on a project, post in the comments below so that people know you're looking for contributors on your project. I think that would be a really fun way to like spark conversation around personal projects. And please comment and let me know what you're working on. Let me know what kind of you know, tools you're looking at, how your simulator stuff is going, any cool robotics podcasts you've come across or even other robotics channels that you really like on YouTube. I'm always like looking around to see if there's anything interesting to me on there. So post that stuff in the comments. I would love to take a look at it. And I know other people in this community would also love to take a look at it. Okay, happy projecting. And I hope you enjoy getting started in robotics.